Wow, let's give up for Freddie's band and Alex. Yeah. Yeah. Alex, I did not know. Ooh. I didn't even know you played guitar. Wow. You, you inspired me. Maybe I'll try one. <laughs> for sure, I don't know how to play guitar, but I'm trying to learn right now. But oh, thank you, thank you. Uh, man, that's uh, been a wonderful, crazy week. A uh, very hot week. And anybody uh, uh, endure the storm last night? Uh, isn't that crazy? I mean, first of all, uh, we, had, we had this car wash and snow cream thing going on, and we were all talking about, oh, this is rain going to come, and we were praying and praying, and uh, checked Saturday morning, and right between 10 a.m. to 3 p.m., there was sunshine, and there was like rain after, I was like, God, you're amazing, you're great, you're cool, and I just said all these different things, and sure enough, we came to the car wash and snow cream, and just to let you know, we made $610, uh, awesome, so $610, and uh, amen, yes, amen. And then uh, right after the car wash, and I almost had a heat stroke. <laughs> I was like dizzy. I was kind of going, I don't know what I was doing. But uh, got home, and and around, I guess it was like, I'd say 8 o'clock, right? Uh, it started to rain, and it was me, my, my wife, and Adelaide, uh, and my son and my mom, they were all coming from Woodbridge. And I was just chilling there, and all of a sudden my phone goes off. And it's like, I look at my said, warning, tornado, take shelter. And I said, let's go down to the basement. <laughs> and Adelaide was like, what do you mean? And I said, it says here, warning, you gotta go to the basement. My wife's like, don't worry about it. I was like, no, we gotta go down to the basement. It says there, seek shelter now. <laughs> and my wife's like, she's cooking and saying, no, no, it's okay. And we're just sitting there and my heart's beating. It's like, oh man, what's going on? And sure enough, nothing happened. Uh, and, but uh, I guess I'm just getting prepared for principal. Because <laughs> I'm the, I guess I'm gonna take shelter now. Uh, but anyways, uh, yeah, so that storm was pretty crazy. There's uh, was like a lot of, my son said he saw a tornado uh, driving up from Woodbridge, a small one. But I don't know, anybody see any tornadoes? Oh, that's good. So good, everybody's safe. And, uh, but yeah, that was, just great, that was some great uh, news about the car wash. It was amazing uh, to see that God is continuously moving. Uh, we got two weeks before we head up to Ecuador uh, for the Ecuador team, so uh, I'm excited to see what you know God's going to do, and definitely want to keep asking you guys to pray for us as we get ready for the Ecuador uh, trip. Um, today is Father's Day. Uh, yes, yes, Father's Day, and thank you, thank you. Uh, Father's Day is one of those days that I enjoy. <laughs> because I, I seem like I get all the attention, you know. Uh, and my, my Father's Day started on Wednesday. <laughs> on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And I just make sure that my family knows that, hey, it's Father's Day, it's coming up. <laughs> uh, but uh, this morning, you know, it's, it's, uh, I'm just getting up, get ready. And then uh, I woke up around 7 a.m. And, you know, my wife woke up right after and said, Happy Father's Day. Oh, thank you. Like the first, you know, the first word when they called her mouth, Happy Father's Day. And then my daughter woke up, and the first thing she says, Happy Father's Day. And I'm like, oh, man, that's awesome. And so my son wakes up and goes, Happy Father's Day. Uh, just to hear Father's Day and just see how much they love me, uh, truly, uh, just it's, it's a warm feeling. It's a real warm feeling. Uh, I can't explain how I feel uh, to see the love that they give me. And, you know, Father's Day, although it's happy, sometimes it's really sad for me because some of you know my testimony. I don't have a father. My father passed away in 2000, and you know, I, I would say that my father wasn't someone that that uh, that I could take example after, because uh, my father was never there for me. And he was there. I knew he loved me, but he never expressed that. Uh, he never was that prime good example. He was always busy with work and business and things like that. So uh, I thought. I said to myself that if I, when I become a father, there are some of the things that I don't want to do. And I try so hard to be a good father, a great father. But you know, even, even that, being a sinner as I am, you know, we make mistakes. We do bad things and we have our temper, we have our anger. But today, I want to talk to you about not just to the fathers, uh, but just to the men in this room, the men. Uh, I wanted, last month we talked about what it means to be a godly woman, but today I want to talk about what it means to be a godly man. What does it mean to be a godly man? 
And just thinking about what does it mean to be a godly man, the first thing you have to ask yourself, men and women, is that who is God to you? If you sit down and you just meditate and you just ponder on that question, who is God to you? Is God truly your father? Is God truly your master? Is God truly your one and only? Or is God someone that you just said, say that, oh, I'm a believer. And you have God up there just in case when you need something. Or when things go bad that you seek him. Or is God someone that plays an important part of your life every moment, every second, every time in your life? Who is God to you? Who is God to you? I think that's a very important question to answer, especially as men. Um, in the society these days, from, from the society that I was growing up to the society today that we see, they portray men to be morons, dumb people, you have shows that are on TV like Simpson and like American Dad and like Modern Family, all those modern day sitcoms that portray men to be absolutely clueless. And I was about to go watch Inside Out. And so I think some of you may have already seen it. Uh, but as I was reading the review, I, I, I'm still gonna watch it. But I, saw, I saw the review, but one guy on the review basically said, this is, this movie is terrible because it portrays men to be clueless. It, I, don't, I didn't see the movie, I'm not, I hope I'm not spoiling anything, but I'm just reading the reviews. But it says, it says men are clueless and our society has made men to be something that's not prominent, not, not a spiritual leader. And that's not the design what God had called men to be. God made man to be that spiritual leader, that be that spiritual person in the head, in the family, and in the church. And everywhere around, men need to be godly. Men need to step up, especially in the world we are today. We got to step up. We got to be prepared. We got to get ready to be what it means to be a man. Not just any man, but a godly man. You know, my title I have there says, What a Man. And then push here. I don't know if you caught on, but I kind of took that reference from that song. I don't know who sang it, but I just it stuck in my head. What a man! What a man! What a mighty good man! Who sings that song? Oh yeah. Is that, is it? I don't know. I <laughs> anyway, uh, but yeah, what kind of man do you want to be? We got to be a godly man. You know, I wish one thing that was very uh, available were. Women's the thesaurus and a man's thesaurus. Because lots of times when women say things, they don't really mean what they're really saying. You know, there's a hidden message behind what they say. And lots of times, guys, we don't get it. You know, well, men have certain things that they say that they don't really mean. So here are some examples. This is just for a joke, but here's some examples that I saw. When a man says it would take too long to explain, all right, what he really means is. I have no idea how it works, right? <laughs> when a man says, take a break, honey, you're working too hard. What he really means is, I can't hear the game, can you turn the vacuum off? <laughs> when a man says, that's very interesting, dear. What he really means is, are you still talking? <laughs> I just read that, but say, let's carry on. When a man says, it's a guy thing, what he really means is, there's no rational thought pattern connected with this, and that you have no chance of making it logical. Okay, you get that? Anyway, basic, okay, so here you go, it's a guy thing. Anyways, <laughs> uh, when a man says, can I help with dinner? He really means, why isn't it ready yet? All right? When a man says, oh, don't fuss, I just cut myself, it's no big deal. What he really means is, I probably severed a limb, <laughs> but I'll need to bleed to death before I admit it. Uh, I'm hurt, but get over it and help me. Okay, so that's what he really means. Uh, when a man says, you look terrific, he means, oh, please don't try one more outfit. We're late and I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. uh, when a man says, I'm not lost, I know exactly where we are. We all know this. He really means no one will ever see us alive again. <laughs> uh, when a man says, that's not what I meant. What he really means is if something I said can be interpreted in two ways, and one of the ways makes you sad or angry, I meant the other one. <laughs> All right. Anyway, these are just some funny little things about what men might want to say, but 
And all in all, it's very important to be a godly man. In Proverbs 26, it asks a very sobering question. But a faithful man who can find? In this world that we live in, what kind of man do we need to be? We need to be a faithful, <coughs> godly man. More and more so today as we live, wives seek godly men. Our wives need to, for us to be godly men. Our girlfriends need for us to be godly men. Our children need us to be godly men. Our church needs to be uh, needs for us to be godly men. Even your workplace, your school needs you to be a godly man. Your community, your nation needs you to be a godly man. What this world needs is not man behaving badly, but man behaving godly. I'm very convinced and I'm very sure that when men start to behave godly, church will have a revival. Families will start to grow more healthier. Your children will grow to be more healthier spiritually and morally men need to step up and be godly david in the and king david gives us a prime example of what it means to be a godly man so if you have your bibles turn to psalms 101 psalms 101 This is his song that he wrote as a profession of his unrighteousness. When he committed a sin, this is what he penned down in Psalms 101. And David wrote, I will sing a steadfast love and justice to you, O Lord. I will make music. I will partner the way that is blameless. Oh, when you will come to me, I will walk with integrity of heart within my house. I will not set before my eyes anything that is worthless. I hate the work of those who fall away. They should not cling to me. A perverse heart shall be far from me, and I will know nothing of evil. Whoever slander his neighbor secretly, I will destroy. Whoever has a haughty look and an arrogant heart, I will not endure. I will look with favor on a faithful, a faithful in the land that they may dwell with me. He who walks in the way that is blameless shall minister to me. No one who practices deceit shall dwell in my house. No one who utters lies shall continue before my eyes. Morning by morning I will destroy all the wicked in the land, cutting off their evildoers from the city of the Lord. I think from this verse, from this chapter, we can draw out some of the godly characteristics of what godly men should be. The first one David mentions here is that a godly man will sing a loving kindness and justice. A godly man will sing praises, right? It's not a man that sings in the shower or some other type of songs, right? But these men, godly men, will sing through their hearts of praise to their Lord. In fact, when was the last time did you ever really praise with your heart to your God, to the Lord? I think that's not just something that should be done just periodically, but should be done every single day of our life. Every time we wake up in the morning, every time, godly men, when we get up, we should thank the Lord, we should praise the Lord, we should give thanks to the Lord for the things that He's provided for us, for the things that He's given us. We need to praise with our lips, we need to praise with our hearts. We shouldn't be afraid to express how much we love God. Don't be afraid, don't be shy, don't be embarrassed of how much you love God. If you are a believer, you need to express to those who don't know who Christ is, of how much you love your God. That means when you see someone, when, you, when you're with people, when you're in a crowd, or when you're in it, you got to let them know how much you love God. To the friends that you hang around with, the people, the co-workers, everybody, they know how much you love God. Are you those people that, uh, the, the friends, they say, oh man, he, yeah, he, 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 he's way, man, he's like a Jesus freak, man, or, you know what I'm saying? Like, don't say anything bad things about him, man. You know, he don't like cuss words, or he don't like doing those things. If I heard those things, you should be proud of those things. You should be excited that those people are saying those things, because you are living differently. And that's what the Word of God tells us as a believer, you are to be separated from the world. You are to be, be apart from this world with being apart from this world means that you got to be the light. 
And if you don't really truly love God, how can you be the light to those people around you? Man, don't be afraid to show your expression of love towards God. Because when you show your expression towards love of God, everything else will follow. You'll start to show expression to your love to your spouse, your girlfriend, and to your children. So I think the biggest problem with men is showing, showing love to someone else. Especially when you're dating or when you're married. It's very hard for a man. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's from our background that we grow up. But it's far, very hard for us to say, I love you. You know, we have to wait till something happens and we say, I love you. Why not just randomly, unexpectedly, just say, hey, I love you. And then everybody's like, what before? <laughs> I just love you. You want something. <laughs> Why do we have to make it to that point? Why do we have to make it, like, when we say I love you, that there's something behind it? No. That means you're not showing that much love. You're not expressing your love enough when they're asking those questions, when they're saying those things. You see, it should be a point when we say, hey, I love you. They should say, oh, man, I know. I love you too. Right? My dad never said he loved me once. My dad, as long as I lived with my dad, my never dad once uttered the word, I love you, son. He did. And when he died, he still didn't say it. I mean, I talked to him three days before he died. And, and I, was, I was married and he only talked to me for a few seconds. And he said, let me speak to your wife. And I said, okay. My wife had a longer conversation with my dad before he died. But I've never once heard him say, I love you. Maybe he did when I was a little baby when I didn't really know. But when I was, I was growing up, he never once said those words. You might think it's selfish. You might think it's not necessary. But it's so important for you to express your love. And not just to show it, but with words. Look at someone. Look at your other, look at your spouse, look at your, your relationship, look at your children, and remind them how much you love them. Remind them how much you love them, but also remind them how much you love God, too. Show them how much you love God. Because your spouse, your children will take after that, of how much you love God. And the more you love God, the more they will see that. The more it will become healthy. Men, learn to praise, sing songs of loving, kindness, and justice. David also says here that godly man pays close attention to living a blameless way. Pay, pay close attention of how you're living. Don't just go with the flow. Don't just sit there and just say, oh, okay, I'm just going to do this. Be careful in the places that you go to. Be mindful of what you're doing. Be careful of the words that you say. Watch what you're doing always. This is what David is saying. For a godly man, we are to be paying a close attention of how we are to live this life. He says here that in my house, there's an integrity of my heart. What does integrity mean? It means that you do what you say. And if you say that I'm a godly man, then do it, live it. Just don't do it, in the, in the, in the, don't just say it and not do it. You're being a hypocrite. Men, we should strive every single day to walk down the narrow path. <coughs> because the road to heaven is a narrow path. And we as men and godly men need to stay on that narrow path. David also says that a godly man will set no worthless things before their eyes. Men, we should be very careful of the things that are allowed to influence us. When we look at women in a disgusting way, when we allow pornography to come into our eyes, when we allow unholy things to, and worthless things before our eyes, it will corrupt the soul, it will corrupt the heart. We ought to really cut that off. We ought to be careful in the things that we allow to come into our mind. Don't let those temptations, don't let those things creep into your soul, creep into your heart. David says also in verse 4, that a godly man will know no evil. <coughs> a perverse heart he shall depart from. A godly man, as I said, 
will not deal with those type of things. We'll stay away from those things. You see, the reason why this is so important in our lives, especially in young, young lives, is that I know we only have a few people who are married here, but as a single adult, as a, a boyfriend and girlfriend, if godly men, if you're continuously feeling yourself with these images in your mind, you expect that to happen with your relationship with your girlfriend. And then, although your girlfriend and you love each other, and we, you might think that, you know, that doing some certain things to fulfill those satisfactions is okay. You as a godly man need to say no. You as a godly man say no, we're not right now. We shouldn't do this. And if you've done it, find grace, find forgiveness, and say, look, I am going to be that spiritual leader. As a godly man, I am going to lead us into not to follow this temptation. Because a godly man knows no evil. A godly man will not keep company with a haughty look, arrogant hearts, and with those who slander others. A godly man is careful to who he hangs around with. The company that he's with, his friends. A godly man will know not to hang around with these certain people. That's Bad as it might sound, as a godly person, there's sometimes there's friends that we need to let go and say, look, you're not a good influence to me. A godly man needs to dwell and practice goodness in their homes. It says in verse seven, those who speak falsely should not stand with the godly man. A godly man will not allow things not of God to enter the home where he's at. Now this is for more for those who are parents, who have children. When your children starts to grow up, you as a parent, you as a godly man, need to make sure that there's no bad things are being, are being shown on TV for your kids to watch. You gotta make, you gotta monitor the things that they're doing on the computer. You gotta make sure that no evilness will creep in and take influence and capture your children's attention. You know, right now, my son and my daughter and all of us, you know, they they watch, they know they only watch like Nickelodeon and uh, Disney, and they don't watch Cartoon Network, because I know Cartoon Network is not very good, and they know not to watch that stuff. But we do find to find alternate stuff to, for them to watch. And one of the things that we like watching as a family these days is a Korean show called Running Man. Uh, I don't know if you saw some of Running Man. It's a game show, and the game show is very fun. It's very, you know, uh, and every time I watch it, the thing that goes into my mind is, oh, I can't wait till the next retreat. <laughs> and I play these fun games, but, you know, we watch it together, and I trust them enough that when I leave, and I'm not there, that they will know what televisions to watch. Why is that? Because when they were growing up, I made sure that they were not watching those type of television shows. <coughs> If you, as a parent, and you become a parent one day, you're just so free for them to watch whatever, I guarantee you, it's gonna to start to shape their minds. And then it's gonna to start to manipulate the way they think. You see, we got to monitor, we got to be careful, we got to you know, be careful of the shows that they watch. My kids, even to them, they're 13 and 12, and every time there's a kissing scene, this is what they do. Every time they watch it, we watch a show, you know, and there's a kissing scene, like like Avengers or something, watch a movie and they're a kissing thing. Immediately my, my daughter goes, ew. And my son, my son goes, oh. <laughs> and then you know what else, you know what my, my wife and I did? I said, I, I'll tell them, I'll tell them, you know, when you're married, it's okay. And I said, honey, come here. <laughs> and I, I kissed my wife. <laughs> Anyways, no, no so. <laughs> But we have to be careful what we do, what, what enters your home. As a godly man, we ought to protect our house <laughs> under armor. We must protect this house, that's right. When you get married, men, you've got to protect your house. It's not your wife's job to protect the house. It's not your children's to protect it. It's not your mother-in-law, mother or mother or father to protect it. Men, it is your job to protect the house your house, your spiritual home, right? It's okay if your wife makes more money, <laughs> right? It's okay if 
They have a better job than you. <coughs> your job is to be a spiritual leader and protect the house so that Satan will not mess with your family, that Satan will not grasp your children, so that Satan will not take away the moral values of your home. It is all rest upon your shoulders, men. The men, when you look at children who may be gone astray, I guarantee you, you look at the man in the house. The eye that were not there, they didn't spend time with them, they didn't say they loved them. We gotta make a difference, you gotta change that role. Lastly, the man David's talking about here is that a godly man, in verse eight, it says every morning, God would just, uh, it says here in verse eight, morning by morning, I would destroy all the wicked in the land, cutting up all the evildoers from the city of the Lord. A godly man, morning by morning, will be on his knees, pray. Every morning, you should ought to start in a word of prayer. Man, you want to be godly, you want to be a leader, you want to lead your other significant person, you want to lead your family, you want to do well in your work, you want to be well in the church, get on your knees and start praying. These are what some of the things that David said, what godly man should be. There are promises that when we do become a godly man, there are promises that God gives us. And if you look at Psalms 112, look at Psalms 112. It says, blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who greatly delights in the commandments. His offspring will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches are in the house and his righteousness endures forever. Light dawns in the darkness for the upright. He is gracious, merciful, and righteous. It is well with the man who deals generously and lends who conducts his affairs with justice. For the righteous will never be moved. He will be remembered forever. He is not afraid of bad news. His heart is firm, trusting in the Lord. His heart is steady. He will not be afraid until he looks in the triumph of his adversaries. He has distributed freely. He has given to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. His horn is exalt exalted in honor. The wicked man sees it and is angry. He gnashes at the teeth and melts away. The desires of the, of the wicked will perish. You see, a godly man, when he starts to understand the fear of God and starts to be delighted in his words and listen to the commandments of the words, will begin to see a blessing that comes from God. And what are these promises that God says? That first and foremost, your children will be blessed. Your children, your offspring will be blessed. Not only that, but your character as a godly man will flourish. How much will it flourish? That it will be enduring forever. Which means people will talk about you when you die. People will say, man, I remember that one person. Oh, well, I remember Pastor John when he, when he died like 10 years ago. <laughs> anyways, anyways. But many, many years later. So, you know, you talk about that. You, you begin your, your, gracious, your, your great, uh, graciousness, your mercifulness, your righteousness. Those things that you upheld, those things that you had as a godly man will be remembered. Not only, not only will it be remembered, but when you live as a godly man, your confidence will be there. Your confidence in Christ will never be shaken. Listen to what Psalms 112.6a says, that he will never be moved. So when a situation comes, when a, when, a, when, a, when a thing happens, when a circumstance happens, when there's things that you can't answer, when there's things that you're close with, when you are godly and you're living and, and you have fear of the Lord and you're listening to the commandments, you will not be moved. You cannot be moved. You will not be moved from there. That You will be grounded. You will not be afraid of bad news, it says there. That your heart will be firm and trusting in the Lord. Your heart will be steady, it says. That you will not be afraid. You see, when, as a godly man, when things are rough and things are tough and things are not going right, and you're, and you're basically, you have a family to maybe feed. You have a family that you need to take care of. A godly man will hold the family together because he knows that he has the confidence and trust in the Lord. You see, if, you're not, if you don't have, a, if you're not godly, if you don't have a godly lifestyle with the Lord, when things happen in your family, things like financial problems, things like that, you will falter. And when you falter, the family falters. I see it so many times when money problems creeps in and people are worried about it. People begin to, there's, a, there's an argument within the family and it starts to get bigger and bigger. But if you are a godly man, you can take your family and you can say, listen, we just got to trust God. 
and He will provide. And you be that ground man. You, you have that confidence. You be on your knees morning by morning and pray. And God will deliver you from it because you have that confidence. So listen to this. I'm telling you, men, what does the world need? It doesn't need another athletic, another sports star, another CEO. It needs a godly man. What does a wife need? A wife doesn't need someone that brings home the bacon. The wife needs someone who brings home goodness, loving, caringness, spiritual leadership. What does your children need? Not someone who just takes you from game to game or whatever. Is that someone that can sit you down and talk to you one on one and tell you about life and what it means to live a, a godly life? I love my children now. I mean, they're actually at the level where they, you know, they talk like, you know, at the same level, you know. <laughs> I think they're the same level with me now. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> but I don't know if you read my conversation the other day about my son and I, we talked about it. Uh, and, you know, he, he told me, he, uh, he was like, we were driving in the car, and he was like, I asked him, how have how you been doing today? He said, how school? He said, kind of hectic. I said, oh, do you ever see Adelaide at school? And she's like, oh, yeah, all the time. I said, Oh yeah, do you say hi to each other when you pass by the hallway? I'm like, oh, you pass by? And they said, no, I can't. I said, why? He goes, every time I go by her locker, she was always hanging around all these boys and laughing. And I was like, what? <laughs> what? I mean, really, I was driving, what? <laughs> and he said, ah, I'm just joking. I'm like, what? <laughs> and he's like, oh, man, I just wanted to see your face. I'm like, <laughs> and he goes, no, no, no. He's like, no, I just, I just, uh, we say hi to each other. And we just go to class. We just go to class after that. My heart stopped for a second. <laughs> it really stopped for a second. And I didn't know how to respond. I didn't know how to respond. Do I need to get angry? Do I need to scold them for making fun of, like, pranking me? You know? <laughs> I just said, oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. You know? I just laughed it off. <laughs> you know? No, but, but, like, we're at an age right now where, you know, because I've been taking my son to DC for training, and then, you know, we talk about girls. He do. He's at an age where he talks about girls. But he doesn't want to admit it. <laughs> right? I, I, told, I told him, I said, you know, I said, is there any girls that like you? And he, well, like a couple years ago, he said, man, girls, that nasty. You know, he was like, I asked him this week, I said, you, you got any girls liking you? He said, why do you want to know? <laughs> I, was like, I was like, boy, you better tell me. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we, but then he, he, he said, then he goes, then we kind of thought, like, oh yeah, maybe, maybe there's one girl. I said, how is she? And she's like, she's like I don't know, I don't know. It's like, and it gives, it gives me an opportunity to talk to him. And we do talk. I said, listen, you know, gotta be careful, whatever you do. Make sure that you, know, you help strong to your mold. You are a godly. Oh, I take out the boy. But I said, you know, you're a Christian. You, know, you have to be that life. And it's, yeah, it's a good opportunity to not just talk about girls. We do talk about girls, and, and he has all these questions, and I'd like to talk to him. The only reason why I don't talk with Adelaide is because she's a woman. But every time she's talking about boy, I get angry. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I was like, I, my, my immediate response is no, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, but, uh, uh, next time, I have to, I have to go talk to mom. <laughs> <laughs> I, I won't be able to handle it, Adelaide. <laughs> but, uh, but see, that, see, your children, and hopefully you guys, when you get children of your own, they need someone not just to be that provider, like with physical money and, and materialistic, but they really need someone who can be down to earth, willing to conversate, be part of their lives, be someone who's interested in their lives, even if it's something that's bad, even if it's something that's maybe that they're going through, like, you know, you got to be there for them. You got to have an open heart. You got to say, listen, I'm here for you. And that's what it means to be a godly man to your family. This, not only do you need to be godly man to your children, but listen, your church crossover 
need you to be a godly man too. Church community cannot survive if everyone is not living godly. We all are sinners, we know that. We all make mistakes, we all have our faults. But that's why we come together and we forgive each other, we love each other, and we be there for one another. But then in the midst of that, we grow to try to be more godly and to live more righteously. You know, we don't, we're not here to condemn. Don't ever condemn someone for what they're doing. You know, we, we, we come out with loving, and we come out caring, and we come out and say, hey, I'm glad that you're here. But we need a lot of godly men who are living their lifestyle of saying, listen, I know the world's like this, but I want to be this in Christ. And I want to show that. I'm not afraid to show that I'm a man who loves God. I'm a man who loves my family. I'm a man who loves my children. I'm a man who loves my church. And to show that. The men in this room, one day you'll be a father and you'll be able to, you know, be, you'll be able to hear Happy Father's Day. But until then, I know that we have a couple fathers here and I just want to recognize them. Uh, and Daniel, come up here. And we have a we have a guest here who is also a father. George, I'm gonna come up here. I hope to put you on the spot. I know you're new, but, <laughs> but you're the fa you're a father, so I gotta call you up here. <laughs> and obviously for myself too, I'm a father too. <laughs> but uh, would you do me a favor? Would you pray that <laughs> I don't want me done here, but would you pray for the fathers? that they will raise up to be godly fathers to their children. If they have children, that they can be a godly father to their children, to their spouses, and to their church. So we'll just take a moment just to pray. Oh, 